Welcome biologists. In this session, we're going to be looking at how stem cells can produce things like erythrocytes and neutrophils, xylem and the phloem, and a little bit on the potential uses in research. So first of all, we need to look at how stem cells uh, in the blood can make things like red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes, and also neutrophils, which are an example of white blood cells. So first of all, my my stem cells are found within the bone marrow of my long bones, such as my ribs and my femur, and they will differentiate into other cell types by the use of mitosis. So they will make erythrocytes or red blood cells by, first of all, um, they need to get rid of the nucleus because erythrocytes don't have any nuclei. And also a red blood cell has lots and lots and lots of hemoglobin. So the stem cell will need to make a lot of hemoglobin, a protein, in order to make um, and produce this red blood cell or erythrocyte. Now neutrophils, neutrophils contain a lobed nucleus. So the stem cell here would need to change the shape of its nucleus. And the neutrophil also contains an awful lot of lysosomes, which contain hydrolytic enzymes. So this red blood, so this stem cell, sorry, will need to produce a lot of lysosomes, in, uh, which are enzymes uh, and lysosomes in order to make a neutrophil. So that is how my stem cell here will differentiate into my erythrocyte and my neutrophil. So that's that first spec point. We're now going to move on to how xylem and phloem vessels are produced from meristems. Here are a couple of definitions that I may use in the explanation. Um, you may also find them within textbooks, but you do not need to know them for the MART schemes. So the first thing that we need to be aware of is that the stem cells within plants come from this area here, the vascular cambium. And within them, vascular cambium, we have these meri stem cells. So the meri stem cells are the stem cells in a plant. So the meri stem cells found within the vascular cambium. Now, any cells that are pushed towards the outside of the plant here become phloem, and any cells towards the inside of the plant here become the xylem. And we're going to look a little bit more about how that happens now. So when a xylem is being formed, first of all, we get these parenchyma cells that are produced from my meristem cells in the vascular cambium. And what happens is these parenchyma cells become reinforced with a substance called lignin. And what lignin does is it strengthens the vessel. It also waterproofs the vessel and, and gives it strength against the negative pressure. Anything that's underlined here is taken directly from the MART scheme. And it's well worth learning. Now, because of this waterproofing and uh, against the and giving it strength against negative pressure, it causes the parenchyma cells to actually die. And what this does is the end plates, the end of the cells will um, disappear, as I've shown in that Im image there, and it will create a hollow tube. Now, what this does is it limits the lateral flow of water, but it also allows adhesion. And you're going to learn more about adhesion when you get onto transport in plants. So um, the xylem, as I mentioned before, is a continuous column because of those ends of the cells breaking down, the ends of the walls breaking down. But they also have within them pits. And what these pits allow, they're just in the cell wall, and what they allow is the lateral movement of water out of the xylem. It allows water to bypass a blockage, but also supply other tissues surrounding the xylem with water. Now, my phloem. My phloem, um, again, this is made through parenchyma cells that stretch and elongate um, to form my sieve tube elements. Now, my sieve tube elements actually have um, little gaps within them. Um, and what this allows is a passage of substances in between and up and down the phloem. Now, the phloem transports a similar up and down the the, the plants. You'll learn more about that, about that in transporting plants. But for the moment, what we need to know is we have these sieve tube end plates, which I'm putting the little star in now. Now, the sieve tube end plates have very few organelles within them. They only have a little bit of cytoplasm. So what they need is companion cells that will are metabolically active and they provide things like ATP and proteins, which the sieve tube elements will lack. So that's how the phloem is made and that's the composition of the phloem. Um, that's an image that you may be asked to identify on an exam. You can, again, you'll do more about this in transporting plants. I'm just going to quickly touch upon the last specification point because at this point, all you need to know is that stem cells can be used to, in research to look for cures for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You don't need to know how, you just need to know that they could be. There's some fantastic TED Talks on this, so I advise that you have a look at some of those.